Hello, this is Haka Dabin, and today we are going to be reading some spooky paranormal o o stories that are totally real stories that people have been experiencing on Reddit. Since this is on r slash paranormal, this means that these are experiences that people believe they actually experienced. Whether or not they're real is not really for us to judge. And it's probably best to just us go in assuming that that these people all truly are experiencing what they say they experience. Just as we do with everything else. Now let's get right into this. <sighs> Dreams of my deceased brother. My older brother passed away nine years ago. I was the one who found him. Last night, I dreamt of him again. There have been periods spending months when I dream of him nearly every night. I notice when I'm stressed, he comes more often. The dreams sometimes do not feel like dreams. They feel like visitations. There are moments in the dreams where I come in and out of consciousness. Even the ones that aren't lucid. I still feel the pain in my chest. The sadness that he will leave. I'm always trying to please him, to get him to stay. I hug him. I feel like crying, even when I'm not conscious that I'm dreaming, or that he is gone IRL. Sometimes he's just floating in the background, like an extra in a movie, and I don't realize he was there until I wake up. Sometimes I'll begin as a normal dream, but the pain of losing him, the dread I feel to keep him near me, is what wakes me up. Then we lock eyes, and knowing introduces itself and hangs in the air between us. The knowledge that he is gone, and this is a visitation. Once this happens, we become quiet, and sadness overtakes his face. He never smiles in my dreams, and it's always so somber, sad. I used to believe dreams were just from your subconscious mind. I dream of him a lot because I always miss him, but something inside me is telling me this is different. I shouldn't be seeing him so frequently. It's like he's trying to tell me something. Like his soul is stuck here in that plane and he needs me to free him. In my dreams, he never smiles. He is sad, somber, quiet. It's almost like he's counting on me to wake up in my dreams so we can talk. And when I don't, he's disappointed. Please, someone help me. How can I be lucid enough to ask what he needs? Is he stuck in that realm? His soul unable to move on? I'm scared to lose his dream on purpose because I experience sleep paralysis sometimes. But I've been so sad thinking about him watering in a plane, stuck. <sighs> I don't think there's anything you can really do, and you should absolutely not try to um, lose a dream on purpose if it's going to cause uh, sleep paralysis. Alright, next story. Who's talking to me? When I was about eight, I was in a school library talking to a friend about the new Halloween books that had just been and set out. As soon as I spoke, my hearing became up when I heard a girl's voice loudly and clearly say, Who's Halloween? I remember being weirded out and telling my friend what happened, to which she just gave me a funny look and thought I was probably messing with her. But it was so random, so quick, and so audible, I haven't been able to shake it to this day, even though it has never happened again. What gives? Um, I think I've experienced something like this. Where you think you hear something, but that you didn't actually hear. I don't know what I kept on thinking that, but it was really creepy and it was really irritating. Because I felt like there were even more people talking at once when there weren't. Like something you'll hear your name or you'll hear someone... Uh, and, and speak in a conversation, but you can't really tell what they're saying. 
I've had that happen a lot. It's like there's no one actually speaking or talking about anything. Anyway, next story. Am I hallucinating or am I being haunted? Sorry, this is super long. Bear with me. I also apologize if this is a little all over the place or hard to understand. Eh, at least you apologize for it. But also, super long. The other two were super short. This might balance out the video a little bit. I'm male, 14 years old. I'm a little skeptical when it comes to the paranormal, but I'm, I'm very open-minded. I also like to think I'm pretty rational. I'm hearing, impa I'm hearing impaired. A lot of common noises like people chewing food or cars driving past you as you walk on the sidewalk are noises that I can't hear. I have anxiety, but no other mental illnesses diagnosed. Might have autism and or depression, though. I think that if you had a... Never mind, actually. These occurrences follow me between two places. House 1 and House 2. House 2 is my friend Emily's holiday house that we go to every weekend. About an hour and a half drive, and House 1 is our regular place. By the way, for any audience members that are not from the North American continent, an hour and a half is, a, and is an actually short drive in, in America. I have been hearing things for a long time. Unusual for me, considering I have a hearing impairment and I don't wear any hearing aids ever. Some things are simply creaks or bumps in the house that can easily be chalked up to house noises or the house settling. I always hate the phrase the house settling because it doesn't make any sense to me. Like, especially if you're like in a really old house, like, come on house, you've had a hundred years to settle and you still are freaking out? Like, chill out. Anyway. But other things are more concerning to me. Sometimes I hear the voices of people all I know, like best friends or immediate family, saying my name. Oh yeah, I've had this. I don't know what it is, probably an auditory hallucination. I hear like peop when people call out your name to get your attention. Usually it sounds like it is just coming from my head, and even though I don't really have an explanation for it, I brush I brush it off as it's not really harming me. Other times though, it sounds like the voice is coming from a place in my house. This happened in house one. My room is upstairs by the staircase. And I can sometimes faintly hear the voice of my mom calling my name from downstairs. And when I go down the steps and ask if she called me, she gives me a confused look and says, No. I usually just head back into my room and rush off like usual. We usually could confuse, but never freaked out or scared. This one time, though, something left me not only confused, but pretty creeped out. In house one again, I was upstairs in my room with the door closed, just chilling while my, while my mom was downstairs in the kitchen. On my laptop, YouTube on, on earphones in, drawing on my crappy 2013 iPad Air. Just me and my mom in the house. It was like 2pm, still bright out. Suddenly, I heard this massive crash from downstairs. Think of a huge truck ground itself into your house. It's weird though because uh, the house didn't even shake. No vibration at all actually. I literally jumped so hard my earphones flew out of my ears. I took like 10 seconds to think about what that what it could have been. But the only rational explanation was that my mom must have dropped something in like 10 plates at the same time. I opened my door and ran downstairs, only to find that my mom was just in the kitchen, cleaning or something. I paused, just standing on the stairs, staring at her, feeling so confused. My mom asked me what was wrong, and I asked if she heard that. She said, hear what? I said, that massive crashing noise, that wasn't you. She said no, and that she didn't know what I was talking about. 
I was super weirded out, but I just went upstairs into my room and brushed it off again. One time I also heard knocking. I have a video of this, but I was on my phone and I'm running this on my laptop. Again, house one. I was in my room with headphones in and YouTube on. This time I was home alone. My desk is against the wall and I'm knocking from the wall that I'm facing. It took me a couple of minutes to even realize it was happening, but eventually I realized it was a knocking sound. Think if you took one knuckle and knocked on your wall every one second. Knock, knock, knock. I live in a townhouse with never in, in houses are right up against mine, and I would have thought I was just a, as a neighbor, but there's two issues. It sounded like it was coming inside the wall. There's a small closet in between my room and the wall that separates the neighbor's house and mine. I don't think it could have been an animal as it's not too rhythmic, if that's the right word. I thought it was weird, but I didn't freak out. I recorded knocking after three seconds. After I began recording, it stopped. I decided to knock on the wall and waited a bit to see if it would happen again, but it didn't. I stopped recording and shortly after it started again. I began recording again it, and it started around six seconds, then it stopped. Weirded me out. Sent the video to my friends. I laughed about it and I just brushed it off like I do with everything else. In house one as well, when I was younger, like under 11 years old, I would wake up with a new scratch on my body, usually on my arms. Not light scratches either, but scratches deep enough to turn the skin around it red. Even if it caused a, a light scab. Again, always ignored it and moved on. Never came up with an explanation for this though. My mom thought oh, it was just me scratching myself in my sleep, but ever since I was little, I bit my nails and it wasn't possible for me to leave any serious marks. Didn't even look like a fingernail could cause a scratch like that either. You'd be surprised what fingernails can do. Looks more like if you scratch your skin on something metal. I've always felt different in house too. I absolutely hated going there, and I've tried convincing my mom to let me stay at home for the weekend instead of making me go. Never ends up, up working. Says I can when I turn 16. The second I walk in that house, everything changes. When we first got back in 2017, it was absolutely infested with moths and rats. We would get there to find rat crap on all over our pillows and bed sheets. We would literally find multiple dead moths under my pillow every night. One time, there was this moth the size of a literal bird outside our window. Not for at all, I just want to tell you because I thought it was awesome. My room is the coldest part of the house. It was like one big cold spot, as of right now it's 30 degrees Celsius, and I'm still able to sit here in a hoodie and trackies without sweating. I don't know what trackies are, but I'm gonna believe you. Also, when I'm in this house, I become angry. I snap at family members and everything another person in our thing does. I get really mad at... I just become really hard to be around and really hard to talk to. That doesn't happen in house one unless I'm already in a really bad mood. Even then, I don't usually snap at people who aren't the reason why I'm feeling that way. Obviously, I'm a teenager. Teenagers are moody and have mood swings. I understand that. It just doesn't happen at house one. Hmm. <sighs> I swear I can feel the bed shaking at night in house too. I'll just be lying still, about to fall asleep when the bed starts to shake. It's very subtle though, so I don't even know if I can call it shaking. So vibrating seems, seems like a more appropriate word. Sometimes I feel it, it happen in house too as well. But since we've been having many earthquakes in the area at night, I usually just chalk it up to the whole area shaking. It's the same feeling though, and every other earthquake near er, ever reached up to house too, so I don't think it could be something like that. When it comes to visual hallucinations, my memory becomes foggy. I know I've had them before, but no specific incident comes to mind, so I'm not going to be elaborating on those. 
Also, never had this place objects I know of, except the controllers for the crappy lead lights I bought in House 1. Lost in my room, which is a pretty small square room, and so I haven't found it months later. It's all very weird, but I've strangely never felt like I was in danger despite my anxiety that affects my a life every day. I never feel scared, paranoid, or anything like that. Just neutral. Could be how I am. I don't know. Some things here probably don't make sense. If you have any questions, I'd be willing to answer them. No questions is too personal for me unless it's about the exact location or anything like that. So feel free to ask anything. If you'd, you'd just like something cleared up, I'd also be happy to do that. I just want answers or an explanation for what I've been experiencing so for so long. And nobody came and to give questions or answers. Very sad. <coughs> Let's go to the next story. I'm not sure what's going on, but this sounds very haunted. It's kind of giving me the spooks. Entity made of gold glitter. After looking in the sub for quite some time, I was right of the only paranormal experience I've had that jumps out in my memory. And I've never er, er, read about anyone else spotting something like this, so your thoughts are welcome. A few years ago, my mom and I were driving on a freeway in the afternoon. Everything was normal. No gusty winds, no erratic or reckless drivers, no hazardous bumps or debris on the road. It was just a straightaway. From passenger seats, I feel oh, the car lurch to the right, as if attracted to a huge magnet on the side of the road. Then our mom directs the wheel back to get the car centered, both within a single second. I said something like, whoa, what was that? Mom replied that she had no idea. A couple moments later, not even a mile up, in, up the highway, I glimpsed what I can best describe as a floating, elongated, skinny cloud of brilliantly sparkling gold confetti. And out of the corner of my eye as we are doing about 70 miles per hour. I was born with a genetic eye cancer that causes me to see wacky stuff, things like that all the time, so I thought nothing of it. Besides, huh, that was kind of pretty. Hey. And I wasn't going to say anything until mom asked me if I saw this golden mist on the shoulder. I'm floored. I'm so used to seeing things no one else does because I'm the only one with the significant vision issues. We confirmed that we both saw a, gold, a sparkling golden body, not really in the shape of anything, that flew a couple feet off the ground and rose to a height of 7 to 8 feet. Nothing else happened for the rest of the drive, but we were dumbstruck and a bit weirded out. And no one has ever told me that. They also saw my blind spot manifestations since the incident. Look up Charles Bonnet Syndrome for more info on that if you're curious. It's pretty fascinating. All I could come up with before they started lurching the golden operation is some kind of guardian angel looking out for us on the road. Well, I'm not sure what they'd have been protecting us, us from since all conditions were stable. I'm still stumped. Thanks for reading, and I'd love to hear your thoughts. So I guess if you see sparkly metals, or rather things that look like sparkly metals, or, or floating in your room, then you should probably you just ignore them. They're probably just your guardian angel, or something like that. Who knows? Anyway, next story, chronically haunted. I don't consider myself to a true believer, but because of my personal experiences, I do have a hard time completely discounting the idea of otherworldly beings interacting on our, on our plane of existence. I've suffered from, from insomnia and sleep paralysis and the strangest dreams and nightmares. I'm a super light sleeper. I've always been scared of the dark and I'm 100% the type that turns lights off and sprints to my bed. 
My sleep paralysis is pretty typical. I wake up and feel this darkness and pressure and panic. I don't automatically realize that's what it is. I'll usually think it's some sort of dark presence with malice attacking me. I'll try to scream at it, advantage it the way I've seen it in movies, etc. But when I come out of it, I can recognize that it's just sleep paralysis. That being said, there are other things that have happened revolving around my sleep that I can't rightly explain. There are few instances I can recall, but at the forefront of my mind was the experience of my, at my grandfather's house. I lived with my grandfather for almost a year. For the entire time, everything was normal, but one night as I was sleeping, I felt something touch my foot. It's so typical, scary movie, but I swear I felt something wrap around my ankle. I had a toddler and there was a cat in the house, so I figured it was just one of them on my leg. But I'm not big on being touched while I sleep, so I got angry and shook it off. I felt with my foot connected with something solid. And I hit, or it hit the ground. What happened next struck me with terror. An ungodly yowl. Not like a, an angry cat. Like some sort of demon, I immediately sat up and saw some human-like woman crawling back and forth on the ground, looking extremely agitated. I scooted back against the headboard, looked at the window, then back at the floor. But it was gone. When I checked the time, I saw it was around 4 in the morning. I couldn't leave the bed before the sun came out because I was terrified. I was my grandfather about it. He let me know that his mother in law used to live in that room and die of dementia. He said that she's selling the house, but it's probably the woman I saw based on my description. I didn't get along with her daughter, my grandmother's wife, so I guess it kind of makes sense that she would want to scare me off. It makes me sick to think about. Then for now, this stuff is really hard to talk about, but it's reassuring to know others have had random scary experiences too. I'll come back to talk about more experiences another time. Yeah, that is a creepy one. And now, we have the last one. Strange Midnight Biting Incidents A few nights ago, I was peacefully asleep when I suddenly woke up in the middle of the night. I felt an aggressive biting sensation on my forearm, and something had a tight grip on it. Hanking, I began shouting for help as my mother was in another room. But to my horror, I couldn't open the door or turn on a light. Hmm, sounds like a nightmare I had. After what felt like an, et an eternity, my mother rushed, rushed my aid. However, when she turned on the light, there was nothing there. We checked behind the furniture and every corner of the room, but there was no sign of an intruder or any logical explanation for what just occurred. To make matters even more unsettling, a similar incident happened a few days later. This time it was on the palm of my hand, and my mother arrived and switched on the light. My hand was turned slightly red as if it had been affected, but there were no visible marks or injuries. These inexplicable events have left me baffled and frightened. I can't help but wonder if there might be a supernatural explanation for what I've experienced. Has anyone else encountered something similar to or have any insights into what could be happening? Apparently not. That was r slash paranormal, a collection of paranormal stories that people on Reddit have apparently had. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to do tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!